I don't do this anymore. I don't cut left onto Bridge Road and follow up past Holy Trinity High School, where the trees are shuddering together in the wind, a sign proclaiming, Welcome back, staff and students squatting malevolently in front of them. I don't swing a right into New Chan Creek, one of the more exclusive areas of Teeling, tapping my fingers impatiently against the wheel as I cruise by grass as green as a golf course, but as stern and precise as a marine screw cut. My heart isn't thumping erratically, like a kid making sure his feet don't hang over the bed, so the thing that lives underneath won't grab them, while houses with porches only slightly smaller than the apartment I lived in four years ago flash by my windows. It's not happening. I told myself I was finished with this last time. The last thing I need is to look like a stalker. I'm more like a ghost haunting the last side of my happiness. Although maybe that's being a stalker too. Meanwhile, the sky overhead is a ceiling of unbroken black. Moonless and starless, the same as if there were nothing up there. But I know better. I know that when the cloud cover breaks, the stars will twinkle with ostentatious brightness, peering three times as plentiful as they do on my street in Balsam, where the street lamps follow the townhouse's example of crowding near to each other. Memories of the glittering Newtown Creek sky and other useless things close in on me while I approach the Mahajan house, the sick feeling in my stomach creeping up my throat in slow motion as I take my foot off the gas. My neck swivels to the right, my gaze darting beyond the cobblestone post with the address, 288 Margate Avenue etched neatly into it to focus on the Mahajan's wide, shapely driveway. A single car is parked on the far left, under a maple tree. A muddy white Kia Rio that I spotted occupying the same space about five weeks ago. Mr. Mahajan drives a silver Nissan Infiniti. And only this past November, Mrs. Mahajan bought an electric blue Impala to replace her five-year-old Passat. Tomby doesn't care what kind of car she drives, but her parents gave her a Subaru Legacy because it had a driver death rate of zero on a highway safety study. Obviously, the Kia doesn't belong to any of them. It's not necessarily relevant either. But then again, maybe it is. I don't stop, step on the gas again, zoom by the house as though I have another destination in mind. The tall trees of Newtown Creek are swaying anxiously around me, shrubbery and the occupants of flower beds shaking with such force that they look like they'd appreciate a coat or a blanket. Ultimately, either would only blow away because the winds pick up steam as I leave the Mahajan house in my wake. I was never here tonight. No one knows any different. When things go bad, you're supposed to walk away from them and stay away. It's survival instinct. You don't poke around in the mess, dragging your hands through it like a four-year-old with finger paint. You don't stomp through it, getting it on your shoes and trailing it around after you, leaving permanent stains. It really shouldn't matter who the white Kia belongs to. I'm gone.